discussing what is uh, big news here across the country and certainly in this town, and that is the resignation of Finance Minister Bill Morneau. He says that it was he that decided to tender his resignation this morning to the prime minister, uh, that he had no intention of running in the next election and believed that the recovery part of the pandemic needed someone who would be there in the long term. Morneau also said that he now plans to launch a bid to become secretary general of the OECD, something that the prime minister said in his statement, Canada will, quote, vigorously support. So lots of developments and certainly some stunning news, particularly for the month of August. I've got lots of people joining me for uh, their reaction, but I'll start with our bureau chief, uh, Rob Russo. Um, I, you know, I, I, I take what Bill Morneau said, uh, Rob, but I, I'm not sure uh, how, how much I buy it, frankly, as, as a story. I, it, it was always widely known Bill Morneau wasn't going to run in an election uh, again, uh, that this would likely be his, his last mandate. Um, and I, it, it's curious a little bit, I guess, the timing in terms of why this all came to, to a head now. Right. There, there, there are two or three things that struck me as, as odd. This is a black swan event. They, they, I was looking for signs of rancor. They did everything they could to try and convey the impression that there was no rancor, but it is still an extraordinary event. A finance minister is walking away from his post in the middle of an economic crisis, and we have no idea how this crisis is going to end, when it's going to end. Despite uh, that, and despite their, their suggestions that there is no rancor, uh, the prime minister, as you said, is going to vigorously support his, uh, his candidacy for the leadership of the OECD. Uh, we have not had a great record in mm -hmm. terms of international appointments. The last time we had a vigorous campaign in, in search of something, it was for a Security Council seat at uh, the United Nations. Didn't turn out very well. We have had a Canadian recently head the OECD. That's Don Johnston, who did it from 1996 to 2006. It was a very difficult thing. Uh, it wasn't an easy thing to do, and his French was better. The other thing uh, that struck me as well, he said, I told the Prime Minister today that I'm not running, and that's why I've decided to step down. Is the prime minister at that point now where he's trying to gauge who in his cabinet is running and not running? Are we going to see other people who yeah. are going to decide sure. they're not running? The last thing, Rosemary, uh, if I talked about York Centre as a potential seat for Mark Carney, Toronto Centre is a feather down, safe liberal seat for somebody like Mark Carney or anyone, anyone else who wants to run under the liberal banner. Uh, yeah, those are all <laughs> very good points. Uh, I think David Cochran is there as well. One of the things I, I, we all, we none of us, I think, expected uh, Bill Morneau, knowing him a little bit, to sort of open up uh, his 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 heart and dump it all on the table there. But I think the closest we got to that, David, was when uh, Bill Morneau said um, that he will look forward to watching politics from <laughs> afar. Uh, perhaps a sign that you know that there are parts of this job, as he said, he was honored to do, but there are certainly parts of it that. Surely he didn't expect. Rosie, this was just weird. Can, can we just say that? It's strange to have the finance minister of a G7 country announce that he's not staying on as finance minister in the middle of a pandemic as the government plots the economic recovery from COVID-19 because he wasn't going to run in the next election, but now he's going to run for the leadership of the OECD. Mm -hmm. it, it is just a... In, in a weird year, this is a weird moment, you mm -hmm. know, and, and I'm, I'm not saying he's lying or anything like that, but it is very strange that a Canadian politician who rose to the level of Minister of Finance would walk away as that job is about to embark on arguably its biggest reconstruction task uh, since either the Great Depression or the end of the Second World War, uh, because that is what is facing uh, the economy right now, this, the, to dig out of this seismic crater of an economic hole with the worst employment numbers since the Depression and the biggest deficit since the end of that war, to now put things on a new fiscal track and try to fix some of the social cleavages that have been magnified and laid bare uh, by the fallout of the pandemic. Uh, so yeah, as we expected, you're not really getting uh, the, the spilling of the tea from Bill Morneau. Mm -hmm. You're not getting a lot of emotion or rancor. But I tell you, that twist that he's now mm -hmm. going to run mm -hmm. to be the leadership of the OECD, I find fascinating. Uh, when, when you were talking to people after the election about, you know, what the new cabinet might look like going forward and is it time for a change in finance. The only sort of position that people thought that Bill Morneau could accept uh, if a cabinet change was made at that time was that maybe he could move to foreign affairs because he'd still go to a lot of the big international summits and still be at the big sort of board tables, which is where his strength has been in his time in, in finance. Um, the OECD, I guess, in some way 
satisfies that because you'd be seeking, you know, sort of a, a job in an international forum. Uh, but it is, it is just very strange that after a week mm -hmm. of leaks and anonymous sniping, uh, to see the finance minister quit this job and already launch his campaign for the next job uh, before the ink on the resignation letter is even dry. And to Rob's point, you know, speaking to liberals about Mark Kearney last week and the week before, like, would he run in, in York Center? And people said to me, that's a good seat. It's not a great seat. It's mm -hmm. a coin toss mm -hmm. seat, requires a lot of on-the-ground work. Toronto Center is a great seat. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you want someone to run to walk into a cabinet post and you're a liberal, that's the one. That's, that's, that's Bob Ray's old seat. Like, I mean, that's, that's just a, they, uh, that's a fairly easy win. Yeah, I mean, it did seem almost like um, orchestrated might, might sound like there's something malicious to it, but, but a, a very well-coordinated, graceful exit, uh, as well-coordinated as, as they could muster at, at this point. David Hurley, I'll bring you in to get your reaction. It, it, it was a bit of a twist, I have to say, um, and, and I'm not sure, given everything that's happened in the past week or so, uh, what we should actually read into this. Your thoughts? Well, <clears throat> I, I'm going to let you off the hook. You're all journalists, so you can't say it. I'll say it. That wasn't plausible. Uh, that's not. <laughs> that's not. That's not what happened. Uh, we don't know what happened, but that didn't happen because, as you've all pointed out, being the finance minister of Canada. Uh, in the middle of this uh, economic crisis is a real job, and it's a job that anybody who's interested in public policy would want to have, to have your uh, to have your hands on those levers right now, if you've got exciting ideas about the economy, and if you've got exciting ideas about how to rebuild. So uh, he apparently has those because he wants to do them at the OECD. So he's not leaving this job to go to the OECD. There's not even any comparing these jobs. Nobody cares about that job at the OECD. It's not a G7 finance job. And so that's not what happened. So we know that he's left. We know that the prime minister lost confidence in him and that that's why he left. What we don't know is what the prime minister lost confidence in him over. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think leaving the job, as you point out, uh, a leader of a G7 country managing an economy during a pandemic to run for a position, not even to get the position, but to run for the position, um, is, is curious, to say the least. And you're right, we are journalists, so we will let you say those things. <laughs> let me uh, let me bring in uh, Amarjeet Sohi, uh, who, who was around the cabinet table with Bill Morneau, uh, and just, I guess, ask uh, Mr. Sohi how surprised you are. Well, I am absolutely surprised by the, by the departure uh, of uh, Minister Morneau. But I think Minister Morneau has every reason to be uh, proud of his work over the last uh, five years. You know, Canada Child Benefit uh, is his legacy, along with uh, the legacy of uh, uh, Trudeau government, uh, negotiating uh, uh, enhanced uh, uh, C CPP uh, to help workers retire into, uh, with more income is uh, yes. Bill Morneau's uh, legacy, his legacy on uh, middle-class tax cut, his legacy on uh, purchasing Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion project. I think Bill has no. many, many reasons to be uh, reason to be proud of. The sense I get listening to the conf uh, uh, his, his uh, uh, press conference, uh, Rosie, is that there were major uh, uh, points of uh, uh, difference yes. in, uh, in approach to recovery. Yes. Recovery, what needs to be done on the on the recovery? And uh, Minister Morno, as you have noticed in his uh, in press conference, uh, felt that uh, there has to be another appropriate person to uh, uh, lead that recovery. Uh, and, and I think he has made that decision, keeping yeah. in mind uh, that uh, that there has to be a new leadership at Finance to uh, right. steer. Uh, yeah, Canada, yeah, and I, I, I appreciate your candor in saying that because it, certainly he did say, I want to have an appropriate impact at the appropriate time. He said, you want the appropriate person for the job right now. I mean, there was all sorts of dancing around what you're saying. Um, but I wonder, you know, would it really, and I'll get other people to weigh in here, Brad Leving is, is joining us as well, would it really have been so damaging for Bill Morneau to say, I, I've sort of done what I have to do, and we're at a bit of a crossroads in terms of the direction of the recovery, and I'm going to let the Prime Minister take things in, in the way he wants to go. Instead of saying, I ran for re-election 10 months ago, I'm not going to run again, and so I'm going to go off and do this. I mean, could a little more um, frankness not have been useful here, Brad? Well, 
It, it may have, but this is nothing more than a than a than a ruse. I, you know, I, I agree with uh, David Hurley. This is this is a distraction. Every sentence that this that you, all of your guests are talking about OECD means that we're not talking about we uh, charity scandal, and we're not talking about the other ethical challenges that Mr. Morneau had, or that the. Uh, that or that Mr. Morneau had uh, differences of opinion with 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 Mr. Trudeau. Look, two quick points that I, uh, I'd like to sure. make at this at this stage. The fact that the last election was 303 days ago, and all of a sudden he's saying, "Well, I'm not running again." Yeah. Yeah. Even when we're in a minority context, most minority parliaments last yes. two years is yeah. is yeah. usually the thing. So we're not even 10 months into a 24 month mandate. Uh, I see finance ministers who aren't running again at the provincial level. They are not walking away this far early. There's other reasons to do so. Second point I, I want to raise: this beginning to develop a, a little bit of a pattern here with Mr. Trudeau and what I would I would call vanity candidates. That is, candidates that he needs to recruit in order to augment some of his weaknesses, which is not a crime in and of itself. But when when things get difficult, uh, they seem to be the ones that take the, the brunt uh, for something that, you know, his, his ethics are involved with. I mean, Judy Wilson-Raybould, uh, certainly not a very substantive candidate, not a vanity candidate, but somebody who he brought in from the outside. Bill Marneau, somebody he brought in from the outside to augment his, his, his team, uh, you know, ability to put forward a full team. Uh, Mr. Morneau, I, I, I get the sense that there's going to be lots of sympathy that he's been thrown under the bus. And all this OECD stuff is a ruse to yeah. get us off the topic as to really why uh, he's been uh, he's been yeah. shown the exit. I, mean, I, I guess a couple points. Obviously, the, the the conflict between Jody Wilson Raybould and the Prime Minister's office was was pretty apparent and pretty public. The, the difference in this is is that it is less so. Um, I would also say a, a couple other things. The ethics investigation, from from what I understand, uh, into what happened with Mr. Morna will continue, uh, although he may not have to actually pay any penalties. But I, I would also say that because he will become now a, a simple citizen like the rest of us, and I'll bring in Charlie. Angus here, uh, who's on the Finance Committee, NDP MP on the Finance Committee, I think he can be compelled now to appear in front of the committee, which is not the case uh, of, a, of a sitting MP, where you have to agree to an invitation. In this case, if they want him back, he will he will have to come back. Um, but Charlie Angus, you, you can correct me if those things are wrong and just give me your reaction as well. Well, I, clearly, uh, Bill Morneau had to walk the plank, because uh, when uh, Commissioner Dion presents his findings in the fall, uh, which I think everyone agrees is going to be pretty damning of both Justin Trudeau's involvement with we and Bill Morneau's. Someone had to walk the plank, and it wasn't going to be the prime minister. So someone had to be put in the ejector seat. And I think what's extraordinary is we're in the biggest economic crisis mm -hmm. in a century, and the prime minister spinmeisters were so concerned about getting past this scandal that they signaled to the international community that there was a fight between the finance minister and the prime minister, which, of course, I don't believe there was a fight, but about spending too much money or not spending enough money. That sends a really weird message, but it shows how damning the uh, the wee scandal is to the prime minister. He had to get past this, so Bill Morneau had to walk the plank. Yeah. And again, uh, this is, I think, really, it shows that ethical breaches have consequences. And this was really unnecessary for the Prime Minister to have ended up in this situation. Okay. But, Mr. Angus, let me ask you, how concerned are you for, for, I think, what was your first point, and that is that Canada now finds itself without a finance minister uh, in the midst of a fairly critical moment in this pandemic? I, I mean, I imagine someone will be appointed quickly or there'll still be an interim person. But, it, you know, presumably that is concerning and should be concerning to Canadians, that they want someone in there who can do the job properly. Well, I think they've sent the signal for a few weeks. There's that old vaudeville joke about the cat on the roof. I'm not going to go through, but that was what they were doing with Bill Morneau. They, Bill Morneau was on the roof, right. and they were signaling it. So uh, Mark Carney's going to miraculously appear and reassure everybody. But this goes back to the really atrociously bad judgment of both the Prime Minister and Minister Morneau. And I think, it's a, I think it throws people at the time of a crisis when we need to be coming together. And we were so focused, I think. Parliament was working together. We had so many programs that, yeah, there were a lot of problems, but things were coming out. And then suddenly this bizarre we scheme came through, the billion dollars. And then we found out, well, gee, Bill Morneau forgot. He had got $41,000 in free travel. And then we told us that nobody got paid, but whole 
the prime minister's family got upwards of half a million. This stinks. It's really damaging to the prime minister at a time when he needs to show to the international community and to Canadians, he's got this thing together. And for his finance minister to have to walk the plank, and he, you know what? Me and Bill Morneau, we didn't agree, but I thought he did a loyal job as a good liberal today, and he jumped into the shark waters because he was going to take the fall for the prime minister. But it goes back to Justin Trudeau's judgment. Okay, if you're just joining us, I'm Rosemary Barton here on CBC News Network. We've got lots of special coverage, obviously, uh, with the resignation of Bill Morneau, uh, once was Canada's finance minister, no longer, is also leaving his seat as MP. Uh, so that will mean a by-election. But perhaps more importantly, it will mean that Canada needs a new finance minister. And relatively quickly, um, given the state that we are in right now and the recovery path that we are on, maybe I'll just go back to David Cochran to see if he's there, because uh, he will have to file a story for the National in 45 minutes. I'm not sure how he's doing that, but um, j just wondering w whether you're hearing any more about uh, that part of it, David, like what, what happens next steps, whether whether they can put someone in an interim basis, whether whether this should be of concern to Canadians that, that there was no one manning the charge in that department, whether the Prime Minister's office will do that for now, how that's going to work. Yeah, it's going to have to move fast. And by the way, I just filed my script for the National. Oh, it's already in editing. So there you go. Perhaps it's it's you a miracle. Do some work for me too now. <laughs> uh, but look, uh, how they're going to have to move quickly on this, right? Like the Prime Minister spent the last two weeks uh, sort of going over uh, plans and proposals for social programs, for stimulus, for economic restructuring coming out of this. Uh, there's really no time to lose on that in, in a situation like this when you're plotting your recovery from a pandemic and you've just lost your minister of finance. Um, so they need to figure this out and they need to figure it out quickly. The prime minister is also supposed to be out at least once or twice this week, Rosie, to tell us what happens after the CERB, the Canada Emergency Response Benefit, runs out and how that is going to transition to employment insurance. This is not an insignificant thing, right, that Canadians that are home waiting to try to find out how they're going to, to pay their bills, buy their groceries, and look after their kids uh, if their job doesn't come back. You need someone in mm -hmm. the finance mm -hmm. department through that. So I don't know this yet. I'm trying to find this out. Yeah. I suspect uh, uh, that we are going to have a cabinet shuffle within hours, Evidently. if not within days. Yeah. Yeah. I am flat out told that it's not going to be Mark Kearney going into the finance uh, department as an unelected person. And there's a growing skepticism that they'll ever see him run for the Liberals because he's advising the United Kingdom. He's got this job at the United Nations where he gets to work on things like climate change. And these are things that are very important to him. He's working on this book on income inequality and social inequality, yes, all yeah. things that get the Liberals very excited uh, in a possible white knight finance uh, minister. But People, every time it keeps getting hot, mm -hmm. cold water gets doused mm -hmm. on it. But you know what, Rosie? Last no. week, people were telling me there was nothing to the Morneau Trudeau <laughs> thing, so here we are. <laughs> so so pe to people who have better memories than I, uh, when Paul Martin resigned, for instance, and maybe I'll get David Hurley and, and Rob Russo to jump in here, what, what was the timeline between his resignation and was it John Manley that, that moved in for him? Well, correct me if I'm wrong here, because I'm, I'm, I, I, I will admit that that was briefly before I arrived. <laughs> but I just wonder how many days or, or how long you can go without a finance minister. Yeah, go ahead, David Hurley. Here's how tight it was. <clears throat> Paul Martin heard that he was no longer the finance minister because the news reported that John Manley had been sworn in as the <laughs> finance minister. Right. So a little bit different. A little bit different here. Right. Yeah. But but re reasonably. It's not a job you want to. It's not a job you can leave open for long, though. No, no. Serious. Yeah. And, right. and obviously, uh, perhaps this is moving at a pace that that no one quite expected, uh, as these things tend to do. But but Rob, I'll bring you in. How, how long? You know, how long could this go? I mean, you, you, you need just for, for economic stability in the markets and that kind of thing. You need to have someone in that position. I, I think if they uh, were able to find a, a new potential job for Mr. Morneau this quickly, uh, that they have their finance minister ready to go. I, hmm. uh, uh, as some, someone who runs the bureau here, I think we'll be having uh, making sure that we have cameras at Rideau Hall or asking about Rideau Hall tomorrow morning. I think if, you, if the governor general is there, because we're <laughs> we have other stories right. that indicate she's not always there. That's right. Yes. Although the Chief Justice can do that yes, if, if need right. be. Fair. Um, there, there, are, there are other ways to do that. Now, let's look at the people who could go in there. Yep. There are two or three names. Uh, we've mentioned Krista Freeland. She would be the first woman ever to hold the, uh, the portfolio of Minister of Finance. Uh, knows Wall Street, knows Bay Street, former financial journalist, uh, international uh, bestseller, plutocrats, uh, knows the yep. financial world. Yes. Uh, Francois-Philippe Champagne, international businessman, uh, did well overseas, has had a little 
little bit of trouble in terms of uh, the mortgage that he owed the Chinese government. That might get, might make it difficult for him. And the name uh, Jean-Yves Clos is also is yeah. also uh, mentioned as well, yes. and economics uh, savvy. So uh, and there might be some appeal. I don't think there has been a francophone finance minister since Jean Chrétien, so there might be some, some appeal there. Those are the two or three names people might be thinking of right away. Th those, are, those are good names. I was just uh, scrolling, through, s scrolling through the cabinet list again. I hadn't thought of Jean-Yves du Duclos, who has actually, uh, through the pandemic, performed very well uh, in press conferences uh, and briefings and, and done a pretty good job if you just want a steady hand until perhaps you have someone more permanent, if you just want to put one, someone there in an interim. One life. other yeah. thing, Rosie. Yeah. If, if I, uh, I just said a moment ago that it seemed kind of seamless. I, I don't know how seamless it was because a dozen hours elapsed between their meeting and, and sure. Mr. Morneau's sure. announcement. What did they talk about for a dozen hours? Uh, what was going on in that room? Uh, many of you know that I'm fascinated uh, by what goes on behind closed doors. We'll be sure asking are. those questions. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, it, it was there a negotiation around the language uh, that the prime minister would, would use to support Bill Morneau's bid for the OECD? Um, was was there something that Bill Morneau was going to have to say in order to make this sort of as pain-free as possible? I think those are all um, are things worth knowing. It, I, I will point out that Tana McCharles, our, our colleague the Toronto Star, did ask Mr. Morneau, did you get quitted? And, and he said, no, I tendered my resignation this morning. Um, so, you know, that, that seems to be what unfolded. But from, from this morning, <laughs> you're quite right, to now, uh, the, all the other bits and pieces that happen through the day, those are the parts that are unknown. I would also point out that this is, um, I believe we are Monday. I've been off, so I believe we are Monday. Um, <laughs> this is the, the Prime Minister's, you know, ostensibly his first real day back at the office. He had been on a break for a couple of weeks, although obviously he's always, um, you know, on call. But this was his first day back in the office doing a variety of things. So this was sort of the first thing that confronted him as he walked through the door. And maybe it was far more expected for him um, than it was for some people. But but this is what he had to do. It had to do. And this was his sort of immediate challenge. David Cochran, you want to jump in there? Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to find out what's going on with yeah. the timing of the cabinet shuffle. Various uh, people who have been on total um, radio silence are starting to surface a yes. little bit. Yes. Um, no answer yet on the precise timing, but you just, you've got to get this done quickly, right? And, and the interesting thing about the prime minister is, you know, the first day back to work after vacation often sucks. This is quite a first day back to work <laughs> yeah. from vacation for Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. You know, whether this is the end result that they wanted with all of the reporting that was coming out last week, you know, with people talking about the growing rift between them and the differences, it is the end result that they got, whether they wanted it or not. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, there's a sense that that week of articles really kind of made it inevitable. Uh, whether or not the Prime Minister's, you know, uh, statement expressing confidence in the finance minister, um, it obviously did not do enough. Uh, it's a question of whether whether the finance minister has lost confidence in the prime minister and his staff and the people around him. There are all of these things that go back to what David Hurley said earlier about this whole OECD thing just mm -hmm. kind of being kind of implausible that right. I walked in and quit in the middle of the pandemic so I can go run for this job is... Uh, that's a that's quite the plot twist that I did not see coming in a year. Is nothing but plot twist, Rosie. Yeah. All right. And uh, just for people tuning in, uh, you are watching CBC News Network on an extraordinary day here in the nation's capital, uh, where Bill Morneau, the finance minister, has resigned, uh, both as minister and as MP. And so that leaves the uh, prime minister in this difficult situation now, where he must uh, find someone to replace him, and quickly, as this country uh, moves towards a full recovery or some version of a recovery, anyway, on. The the, on the outset of this uh, pandemic and potentially into uh, more economic difficulty in the fall if, if the virus resurfaces. Um, all of this comes, of course, in the midst of the controversy around we, which both directly affected Bill Morneau and the Prime Minister himself. And Bill Morneau says that this morning it was he who told the Prime Minister he was leaving. Um, this, of course, will be viewed in some ways as a victory for the opposition parties, uh, who uh, many of them felt that Bill Morneau needed to leave, needed to quit. Uh, Michael Barrett is uh, a Conservative MP. I believe he's also on the Finance Committee, and he joins us now. Michael Barrett, good to see you. Thank you for uh, calling in so late and so suddenly. Uh, let me just get your reaction, I guess, to, to this news that Mr. Morneau has resigned. Look, uh, I think a lot of Canadians uh, saw this coming. Uh, we've had shocking revelations uh, in, in the wake of the WE scandal, uh, not the least of which was the uh, more than $40,000 in, in the free trips, the gifts that 
um, Bill Morneau accepted from the WE organization. And, and this is a government in chaos. And uh, Bill Morneau and Justin Trudeau have walked in lockstep for five years. This isn't a policy disagreement. This is Justin Trudeau cutting off his right hand to try and save himself. And, uh, and Canadians aren't going to buy this. Yeah, what, what indication do you have, though, that that, that, that is the case? I mean, it, it did seem, you know, as, as you well know, the prime minister was away for two weeks. It did seem as though things had sort of come to a different level. I'm not saying the story was over, but you know as well as I do that if someone isn't present in the, in the spotlight and not answering questions, it's easier to, for the story to die away. Um, do, do you really think, I mean, does the timing seem a bit odd to you because of that, 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 that the government maybe had felt they had a handle on the Wii story and, and decided to do this now? It, I guess that's my issue. It, does the timing seem a bit weird from your perspective? Uh, no, I think that the worst is yet to come uh, for the Liberals and Justin Trudeau. We have um, we have investigations by virtually every independent officer of Parliament mm -hmm. uh, into the Liberal government right now. Um, you know, Justin Trudeau took his took his vacation, sure, but we now have more standing committees who are going to be taking a look at at this scandal. So. Um, it, uh, you know, the prime minister testified at one committee. He's also yeah. been called to testify at the ethics committee, having yeah. only been to finance so far. Right. Uh, the house isn't sitting, yeah. and so I think there's there's definitely a lot more pain to come. And, and my, uh, and my uh, apologies. Yeah, I said you were on the finance committee. Committee, uh, of course, you are the ethics critic. My apologies for that. Are you? Um, what it, What would be your understanding, though, of what happens to Bill Morneau? Uh, the ethics commissioner continues the investigation. Uh, will Bill Morneau be called again? This time as a as a as a civilian if you will, uh, in front of other committees? What would be your expectation there? Uh, look, the, the ethics commissioner will uh, continue his investigation, um, and uh, as will, as will uh, whatever other bodies are, are undertaking investigations. Uh, we don't have any indication from, uh, from the RCMP uh, um, what, what their investigations uh, look like at this point, uh, but but all of that will continue, and mm -hmm. and findings uh, with the ethics commissioner can happen after someone leaves office. Uh, while parliamentary committees can't compel members to testify, we can uh, we can compel um, you know uh, individuals. And so uh, once the finance minister uh, vacates his seat as a member, which he has said that he will do, um, well, our committee has questions for him. Um, let me also ask you, just in a, in a broader way, even though you are the ethics critic, how concerned you are that uh, we are, for now anyway, without a finance minister, and how urgent you think uh, that replacement needs to happen? Uh, Canadians are tremendously worried about their finances, about their health, about uh, about the country, the broader economic picture. And, uh, and certainly to hear that the finance minister less than a year after the last election um, said that now it's time for him to, uh, uh, to take a shot at, uh, at a job with the OECD um, is, uh, is troubling, it's disappointing. Um, you know, I, I think that there's, there are people would be rightly concerned this evening about the effect on, uh, on markets tomorrow. And uh, and we need to hear uh, we need to hear a response from uh, from the prime minister with what his plan is going forward. And we need to hear that soon. But but you know the the scandal plagued government uh, is is going to be distracted with all kinds of things other than what Canadians are seized with, and that's uh, their personal finances, that's the country's finances, and this ongoing health crisis. This problem is not going away until Justin Trudeau wasn't the prime minister. Okay, Michael Barrett, good of you to call in so late uh, with this breaking news. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Uh, as I said, you're here on CBC News Network, where we are continuing coverage on this breaking news that finance minister, used to be finance minister, former finance minister Bill Morneau has resigned both as minister and as MP. He says that he will now uh, seek to serve the public in a different way and, in fact, plans to run to be secretary general of the OECD. <music> Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.